is the gift to be simple, tis the gift to be free, tis the gift to all come down where we are to be. And when we find ourselves in the place just right, twill be in the valley of love and delight. Welcome to our worship this morning at St. Peter's Episcopal Church in Arlington, Virginia. Everything we do together in the Episcopal Church is shaped by our baptismal covenant. The baptismal covenant, printed on pages 304 to 305 of the Book of Common Prayer, shapes our common life together as much as it shapes our own personal responses to what is going on in the world. In the light of the death of George Floyd and the persistent racism that infects the society in which we live, I'd like to remind you as we begin our worship this morning of two things we are asked to affirm at each and every baptism and to live out in our lives. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? To which we answer, I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. I pray that each of you make these more than words and that God the Father in the Son and through the Holy Spirit may give you the strength and hope to meet the challenges of the days ahead. Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. 
For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Together, let us say the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Let's read Psalm 45 together in unison. Hear, O daughter, consider and listen closely. Forget your people and your father's house. The king will have pleasure in your beauty. He is your master, therefore do him honor. The people of Tyre are here with a gift. The rich among the people seek your favor. All glorious is the princess as she enters. Her gown is cloth of gold. In embroidered apparel she is brought to the king. After her the bridesmaids follow in procession. With joy and gladness they are brought and enter into the palace of the king. In place of fathers, O king, you shall have sons. You shall make them princes over all the earth. I will make your name to be remembered from one generation to another. Therefore, nations will praise you forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. So he said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has greatly blessed my master, and he has become wealthy. He has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, male and female slaves, camels and donkeys. And Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old, and he has given him all that he has. My master made me swear, saying, You shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I live, but you shall go to my father's house to my kindred and get a, and get a wife for my son. I came today to the spring and said, O Lord, the God of my master Abraham, if you will now only make successful the way I am going. I am standing here by the spring of water. Let the young woman who comes out to draw, to whom I shall say, please give me a little water from your jar to drink, and who will say to me, drink and I will draw for your camels also. Let her be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my master's son. Before I had finished speaking in my heart, there was Rebekah coming out with her water jar on her shoulder, and she went down to the spring and drew, and I said to her, please let me drink. She quickly let down her jar from her shoulder and said, drink and I will also water your camels. So I drank and she also watered the camels. Then I asked her, whose daughter are you? She said, the daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Milcah bore to him. So I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her arms. Then I bowed my head and worshiped the Lord and blessed the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me by the right way to obtain the daughter of my master's kinsman for his son. Now then, if you will deal loyally and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, so that I may either turn to the right hand or to the left. And they called Rebekah and said to her, Will you go with this man? She said, I will. So they sent away their sister Rebekah and her nurse, along with Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said to her, May you, our sister, become thousands of myriads. May your offspring gain possession of the gates of their foes. Then Rebekah and her maids rose up, 
mounted the camels, and followed the man. Thus the servant took Rebekah and went his way. Now Isaac had come from Beer Lahiroi and was settled in the Negev. Isaac went out in the evening to walk in the field, and looking up, he saw camels coming. And Rebekah looked up, and when she saw Isaac, she slipped quickly from the camel and said to the servant, Who is the man over there walking in the field to meet us? The servant said, It is my master. So she took her veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. Then Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent. He took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. The word of the Lord. Let us say together Canticle 19, the Song of the Redeemed. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O king of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing praises of your name. For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Matthew. And Jesus says, But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came, neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came, eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to the infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together, Canticle 20, Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest, and peace 
to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Gospel reading this morning contains these oft-cited words of Jesus. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Perhaps you remember it from the translation of the King James Version of the Bible. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. If you grew up in the Episcopal Church, as I did, the words of the 1928 Book of Common Prayer service of the Eucharist, still used in Rite 1 in our 79 prayer book, are the most familiar. During what is known as the Comfortable Words, a set of four passages from the New Testament that immediately follow the absolution of sins, we hear the first sentence of this passage, Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. Come to me, all you that are weary, Come unto me, all ye that labor. Come unto me, all ye that travail. These three different translations of the same passage reveal much about the history of the English language as a composite of Germanic, Romance, and Latinate languages, with a few words of Greek origin thrown in. Travail reveals its French language roots from the verb to work, travailler. Labor from the Latin labora for work, and weary from a Germanic Old English root, warian, which meant to crumble, break down, or totter. Some of these words have slightly changed their meanings in modern English usage. Come to me, all who travail, who labor, who are weary. All three words, no matter which one we use, nonetheless refer to the tiredness or weariness we face when carrying heavy burdens. The burdens Jesus refers to here are not so much physical ones as they are spiritual and emotional. Jesus promises us that he will give us rest, that he will refresh us. But what does Jesus mean by taking up his yoke? A yoke is a harness that constrains our movement. How can putting on a yoke give us rest. Paradoxically, rest cannot be found apart from taking on a yoke. A yoke enables a person or an animal to perform a task such as pulling a plow or carrying water. As the biblical commentator Roger von Harm observes, a yoke restrains and enables. It is simultaneously a burden and a possibility. Every person wears one yoke or another. The question for us is, which yoke are we going to use? Which yoke are we going to put on? Is it going to be the yoke of Jesus or that of another? In the Old Testament account of the Exodus from Egypt, God says to the people of Israel, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt so that you should be their slaves no longer. 
and who broke the bonds of your yoke, enabling you to walk with their heads held high. But when Israel refused to take on the Lord's yoke and serve him only with gladness of heart, God spoke to the people and said, because you did not serve the Lord your God joyfully and with gladness of heart for the abundance of everything, therefore you shall serve your enemies whom the Lord will send against you. He will put on an iron yoke on your neck until he has destroyed you. In the Judaism of Jesus' day, people spoke about taking on the yoke of the Torah. The law of God was seen as a delight. I'm reminded of two verses in Psalm 119, in which the psalmist says, My delight is in your statutes, and your decrees are my delight. It is important to note and to know that in the Jewish tradition, there is the written Torah, the law that God gave to the people of Israel on Mount Sinai and, and is written down in the first five books of the Old Testament, sometimes called the Pentateuch, the five scrolls. And there is an oral Torah that God gave to Moses, which was handed down orally from generation to generation. The oral Torah was later written down as part of what is known as the Talmud. Orthodox Jews today endeavor to observe both the oral and the written Torah. Jesus, like many of his fellow Jews, did not consider the law of God to be burdensome in itself. But he did criticize the way that the rabbis of his day, using the oral Torah, piled on rule after rule, such that keeping the law became burdensome and seemingly impossible to fulfill and to observe fully. The law, in other words, had become a heavy burden for the people. Instead of being life-giving, it became a form of bondage. Jesus, in his teachings, as a result, focused on the inner meaning of the Torah, summarizing it in words taken from the Torah itself. When Jesus was asked, which commandment is the first of all, he replied, citing words we find in the Torah itself, in the book of Deuteronomy. The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The yoke that Jesus puts on his disciples, those who follow him, is light, easy to wear, and kind. The yoke of Jesus asks that we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and our neighbor as ourselves. The burden Jesus places on his followers is light because first it is perfectly contoured to fit our bodies so that we are capable of accomplishing the things that God asks from us. And second, Jesus gives us the strength to bear it. The soul that clergy wear is a symbolic yoke. At our ordination to the diaconate and to the priesthood, clergy are vested with a stole. Do you know how the stole is put on before each and every service? The answer is with a kiss. It is traditional for clergy to kiss the cross at the top, back, and center of the stole before putting it on. It is not the cross itself that is being kissed or the stole that is being worshiped. Rather, the stole is kissed as a sign that the yoke of Jesus, with all its demands, is put on willingly. As a clergy person, I kiss the stole when I vest, not as an act of worshiping it, but rather to symbolize the fact that I embrace the yoke of Jesus and put it on willingly. Many Christians, similarly around the world, who wear a cross around their neck, often kiss the cross before putting it on as a symbol of willingly taking on the yoke of Christ. In the service of holy baptism, we embrace and put on the yoke of Jesus. First, we renounce all the things that link us falsely to the things that are not of God. We renounce all the things that yoke us to sin. We renounce all things that draw us from the love of God, that yoke us from and not to the love of God. Then, we accept the yoke of Jesus, promising to put our whole trust in his grace and love. 
We promise to take on the yoke of Jesus and follow and obey him as our Lord. We also take on the yoke of Jesus as we promise to seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving our neighbors as ourselves, and by respecting the dignity of every human being. When we promise to follow Christ and be his disciple, we take on his yoke. We may not be able to see the yoke, but we know that it is there. In baptism, we are forever united with Christ, forever yoked to him. It's not a yoke of bondage, but one of freedom. The yoke is at the same time a yoke of responsibility as it is a yoke of possibility. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us affirm our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the ways of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit, that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the weeks to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have bound us together in a common life. Help us in the midst of our struggles for justice and truth to confront one another without hatred or bitterness and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This time I ask you to offer your intercessions and thanksgivings, either silently or aloud. We especially pray for those in need of God's healing grace. Anne, Alan, Jan, PK, Jeff, Peter, Rich, Tony, 
Lucy, Richard, Tim, David, Priscilla, Alan, Hale, Patricia, Andy, Dennis, Tilly, Elizabeth, Milo, DJ, Susie, and Deanne. O oh, most mighty and merciful God, in this time of grievous sickness, we flee unto thee for succor. Deliver us, we beseech thee, from our peril. Give strength and skill to all those who minister to the sick. Prosper the means made use of for their cure, and grant that perceiving how frail and uncertain our life is, we may apply our hearts unto that heavenly wisdom which leadeth to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say together a collect for the nation on this 4th of July weekend. Please join me. Almighty God, you have given us this good land as our heritage. May we prove ourselves a people mindful of your generosity and glad to do your will. Bless our land with honest industry, fruitful education, and an honorable way of life. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil course of action. Make us who come from many nations with many different languages a united people. Defend our liberties, and give those whom we have entrusted with the authority of government the spirit of wisdom, that there may be justice and peace in our land. When times are prosperous, let our hearts be thankful, and in troubled times, do not let our trust in you fail. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, 
preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you've given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.